All right, so you just bought yourself a brand new gaming laptop and you're probably wondering what are some of the first steps to take in terms of optimizing and potentially even upgrading the thing to get some performance boosts. Well, that's what this video is all about. So we're gonna walk you through how to optimize, upgrade and show you real performance benefits. Uh, and even you know doing that on a newer laptop can show some amazing results and they're really eye-opening. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, you might recall us doing something similar uh, but that was two years ago. And over the course of that time period, we've learned a lot as Windows 10 has evolved in many ways. Uh, we're also gonna make sure that we put users at ease when it comes to accessing the laptop's interior. It's not that difficult depending on the type you bought. Also, the specimen for this video is the brand new Lenovo Legion 5 AMD. Uh, and all the tips and tricks uh, that I'll be covering in this video can be applied to pretty much any other laptop. Also, huge thanks to Lenovo Legion for partnering with us on this video. So without any further ado, let's just get right into it. So this is the Lenovo Legion 5 AMD. This is one of the most requested gaming laptops we've had this year, and I finally got my hands on one. I also wanna mention this happens to be one of our top gaming laptops of 2020. You can check out that video right over here, and it was picked by none other than the awesome Jared from Jared's Tech. From the outside, it's essentially using the same chassis as the Legion 5i Intel models, but this time we've got AMD running through its veins. I really love the simple and clean design, nothing gamery, no red and black accents. It's designed for minimalists who love gaming, and I happen to fall into that same category as well. The interior space follows the same aesthetic. You get a full-size keyboard with keys that give you excellent feedback, and that's thanks to the True Strike technology, along with Legion's amazing cooling performance with the Coldfront 2.0 system. Port selection is adequate enough. The majority of them are located at the back for easier cable management, so you get an RJ45 port, USB-C with DisplayPort pass-through, two USB-As, HDMI, power in, and Kensington. On the right side, there's another USB-A port. On the left, there's another one and an audio jack. The configuration options on Legion 5 are very flexible. Starting at $1,000, you can get a Ryzen 5 4600H with eight gigabytes of RAM in single channel mode and a GTX 1650, and it can be configured all the way to over $1,400 with an RTX 2060, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and RAID SSDs. What's really cool is that Legion actually allows for certain upgrades within their warranty program, so that includes upgrading the memory and maybe even adding more storage, so that's nice. Setting this up initially didn't take too much time, uh, aside from one minor, or I guess it's a major change, to Windows, and that's uh, the, because they have removed the option to actually use an offline account. And using that type of account was something that a lot of you guys did recommend two years ago, uh, so not having that option is pretty disappointing. The nice thing is that there's not a lot of bloatware pre-installed on the Legion 5, which is great, but there are a few things that needs to be taken care of in order to make sure that things run the way that I want them to. Now, before I get rid of anything, uh, let's just make sure Windows is up to date. I prefer to perform these updates myself instead of having Windows just interrupt my workflow. So you can simply do that by searching updates and then refreshing it every single time when your system restarts and there's just nothing left on the list. Now, since there's no way to stop updates completely anymore, I make sure Windows installs its updates outside my regular working hours as well. Most manufacturers also include an app for their own, like Lenovo Vantage, uh, to check for device-specific updates like a new BIOS, maybe audio or Bluetooth drivers, GPU drivers, and as you can see, this notebook needs that, so let's go ahead and update that. All right, so with that out of the way, I think it's time to clean things up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of McAfee because I've been starting to receive pop-ups and it's annoying. Personally, I think it and Norton are some of the most you know, system resource hungry applications in my opinion, and there are a lot of better free options and alternatives out there. All I have to do is just head over to start and then type in app whiz.cpl. Uh, it's a quick way to access all of your installed programs and applications, uh, which is kind of nice. Now, while I'm here, I'm also get, gonna get rid of WebAdvisor as well. There is an Office 365 trial version pre-installed on the Legion 5, and I think it's pre-installed on pretty much modern Windows laptops, you know, when you buy them right away. Uh, but in this case, I can just log into my Office account and activate my subscription plan. So that's, uh, you know, pretty convenient. All right, so the next step is to download more RAM because, you know, people do that, right? I was just kidding, guys. I mean, if you thought that that was real, it's, <laughs> I feel for you. See, one of the things that you can do with even a new or an old use system is to regularly go through your programs list to make sure that you uninstall apps that you don't necessarily use or don't even touch. 
Uh, I also like to do a few little tweaks within Windows too. So the first thing is to make sure I disable startup programs uh, when I log into Windows, because that can have a massive uh, performance impact when I'm just using it uh, or just logging into Windows every single time because I don't have to wait for programs to load up and you know that can actually make a difference. So run Task Manager from Windows search bar, select Startup and disable any programs you don't use. Don't worry, you'll still be able to access them regularly. Windows tends to have a lot of pop-ups too, so open up notifications and uncheck tips and tricks along with disabling the notifications from any app you don't want interrupting you. Finally, Windows has a disk cleanup utility I use regularly since it removes unused items like temporary files, cache updates, and more. So now that things are running the way that I want them to, I'm gonna download some programs that I think would be useful for a lot of people, and they don't take up a ton of system resources, which is great. Now, if you haven't heard of 99.com, I think you've been missing out. I recommended this in the original video and I'm doing the exact same thing because I still keep doing it every single time when I'm setting up a brand new Windows PC. This is a fantastic site that allows you to handpick and download popular programs, perhaps even discover new ones too. Uh, it's all done on a single site so you don't have to spend hours uh, visiting countless number of sites. For protection, I'd say the built-in Windows Defender is good enough for basic security, but if you're working with sensitive and confidential documents, investing in upgraded security is worth it. I personally prefer Malwarebytes. Uh, there is a free and premium option too, and it's less resource hungry, which is awesome. And you know, it's not like some other programs like McAfee and of course Norton. Man, Norton, those days were tough. Now, one of the most useful utilities that I use is Winderstat. This is a disk usage statistics viewer that allows you to monitor what files are eating up your hard drive's capacity. Since it's a really nice visual UI, you can quickly identify the areas that might be taking up valuable space. Then there's Zoom for online meetings. Personally, I prefer this over Skype uh, since you know it's pretty easy to use and it works on pretty much every other platform, so that's a bonus. Uh, Discord is also a popular communications program among gamers, especially if you're into multiplayer. And then Sumatra PDF is my go-to PDF viewer. It's fast, clean, and straightforward. Foxit Reader is also another great alternative, but uh, yeah, if you just want something light, Sumatra PDF is a great app. For media, I use Spotify for music, but then if you think about it, pretty much everyone else does. Uh, Audacity is also something that I use to record my voiceovers uh, in case if I wanna add something uh, to a video. And that's a useful program, it's free as well, which is great. Um, I also like installing Keylight's Codex, uh, which updates Windows to properly support a bunch of important audio and video formats. Uh, grab the standard version instead of the basic since that one comes with Media Player Classic. It's pretty awesome and I highly recommend this over the stock uh, Windows Media Player. Finally, there's Handbrake for transcoding videos, which I'm sure the Ryzen CPU inside uh, the Legion 5 would love. And not only that, but it also has GPU acceleration for NVIDIA and AMD graphics processors, so you can get a nice little performance bump from that too. Uh, so all I'm gonna do right now is hit the get your 99 button and then it'll download a custom installer and install all the check marked applications with just a press of a button. You know, it's super fast and I just use this every single time when I'm setting up a brand new system. Oh, and there's also another app that I use every single day and that's called Quick Look. It can be downloaded from the Microsoft Store. Essentially it enables a quick preview of a file and its contents by simply hitting the space bar. Uh, kind of like what you get with Mac OS. Um, it's free and I, I love using it every single day, especially when it comes to previewing my photos and of course uh, the footage that I shot or that I shoot or that I have for every video. Now you might notice that I haven't mentioned Chrome for web browsing and the reason being Chrome just loves memory and it can get sluggish at times. So recently I have been using Microsoft Edge. Shocking, right? Well, the truth is it's actually built on Chromium and it has better memory allocations than Chrome. It's also super fast and uh, yeah, I just have been really enjoying using it. Now, if you want some additional privacy in your web client, check out Brave. It's a great little open source browser that puts your privacy first, but it does come with some small limitations like some of the latest patches causing instability, so just be aware of that. Finally, I have to load the desktop with a brand new wallpaper and my go-to source for that is Wallhaven. I still recommend it every single day to pretty much everyone who wants a new wallpaper and just want to change it up a little bit. I do remember recommending it in my original video and I still do now. Uh, they keep updating their collection pretty much every you know once in a while. Uh, they have access to a high resolution wallpaper, so if you want to take advantage of that uh, on your desktop PC, this is a great resource. So normally I just go for abstract, you know, vector art, something just with color, a little bit of color, something that's minimalistic as well. Uh, I can spend hours on it. So <laughs> if you want to kill productivity, 
this is this is one way of doing it. All right, so now I wanna transition into upgrading your brand new gaming laptop. Now, one of the biggest ways that people tend to save money uh, is uh, to go with eight gigabytes of memory, which is the base configuration that most notebook manufacturers provide. They don't wanna spend a penny more or a penny less, which in most instances is perfectly fine if you don't decide to use that notebook uh, for you know, gaming, photo editing, video editing, or just intensive applications. But eight gigabytes of memory on single channel mode can negatively impact performance, especially on AMD Ryzen CPUs. So I wanna cover a bit about how you can see what kind of memory configuration you have, and also how to upgrade uh, to something a little bit better. So there are a lot of ways you can see what kind of memory config you have installed without opening the laptop. Before buying, some companies like Legion make it obvious what they're using, but otherwise, you can just download CPU-Z, head over into the memory tab, and check out the channel information. Dual channel means there's two modules installed, while single means there's just one. Also, take note of the frequency, multiply that by two to get the speed of memory you'll need. On Ryzen 4000 series processors like this one, that's DDR4-3200. The main problem is even if you buy a kit that says 3200 megahertz, it might not actually run at that speed unless if your system and the memory itself supports it. On Intel laptops, that means confirming your system supports XMP profiles, since a lot of modules need that to run at their rated speeds. A good example of this is this G-Skill kit. On AMD systems, it's a bit trickier since even laptops like this Legion one don't have XMP profiles. So what should you do? Well, it all comes down to finding a kit that has verified JDAC speeds up to 3200 megahertz like this one does. And yes, I know that's almost impossible without looking at user reviews, but as a general rule of thumb, the non-gaming or green modules from companies like Crucial, Samsung, and Kingston are high compatibility, but lower performance and are typically JDEX certified for their speeds. If you have a single module, I don't really recommend going out and buying a random module from eBay or Amazon just to populate that second slot because you could run into some compatibility issues. So either buy another matching pair or find a single module that matches the exact same specs as your other or your pre-installed uh, memory module. Now, if you wanna give matching a shot, Crucial actually has an awesome tool that helps you find modules that'll fit with your system but even that doesn't have every system around. Now, before you go grab your screwdriver, this is super important. Uh, while Legion actually allows you to access the inside of the laptop for upgrading, some manufacturers don't. So make sure you read your warranty thoroughly or even contact customer support to just make sure that, you know, everything is in place. But other than that, getting into the Legion 5 is actually pretty straightforward. And it's a process that can be used for many other modern laptops too. You only need a small headed Phillips screwdriver, some patience and some steady hands. Once the screws are removed slowly, and I mean slowly, unclip the laptop's base cover and you'll be inside. If you have an older notebook though, there might be a dedicated memory cover instead. The memory is pretty easy to get to, but on other laptops, it might be covered by thermal shield or some other type of cover. Replacing it is super easy. Just unclip the side metal holders, angle the module, remove it, and pop another module in its place by reversing the process. Now, what you wanna do is close everything back up and start the computer, provided your new memory runs at the same frequency as the ones originally installed. They should be running at the right speed, but you can double check that by heading back into CPU-Z's memory tab. With that out of the way, let's get into talking about how a memory upgrade would affect the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H that's on the Legion 5. To do that, I'll bring you back to what I said before about how some people might have only eight gigabytes or less installed on their laptops. So I'll be covering performance from single channel to dual channel or even 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes. So let's check it out. Starting with Adobe Premiere, and it's no secret that this program loves both dual channel configurations and larger memory footprints. So there's a huge improvement going from a single eight gigabyte module to two eight gigabyte sticks, and then a bit better rendering performance jumping up to a 32 gigabyte configuration. On the other hand, Maya's rendering only sees a significant jump when moving between single and dual channel layouts. That's probably because it only eats up about six gigabytes while chewing through the scene that we're using here. Handbrake's results follow Maya in a lot of ways since it's a CPU rather than a memory intensive program. Then again, there's limited benefits from having 32 gigabytes. Overall, it's really application dependent, but the best layout you can get for the money is probably going to be two by eight gigabytes right now. That is unless you're using a specific program that eats memory for breakfast. 
like Google Chrome. Moving on to gaming, and sure, the GTX 1650 Ti is a little underpowered, but it still gets the job done pretty well at 1080p. Going from single to dual channel almost makes it feel like you've done a GPU upgrade. As for the 32 gigabytes, well, there's really not much in the way of benefits there in games. So now let's talk about another upgrade possibility, and that's storage. And in many ways, it's just as important as memory, maybe even a little bit more considering the size of games these days. On Legion 5, the primary drive is installed into an M.2 slot here, and this is where the 2.5 inch hard drive is located. There's another M.2 slot here as well, but it can only be used if there's nothing in that 2.5 inch caddy. Let's tackle upgrading the spinning hard drive first. So taking it out requires a couple of screws to be removed, unplugging the connector and then carefully sliding it out. Then uninstall the caddy, screw that onto your new drive and repeat the process in reverse order. As for installing a new M.2 SSD, it's even easier provided you remember that there are different sizes and versions of M.2 SSDs and don't buy the wrong one. First of all, either check to see the type of drive you'll need, either SATA for older laptops or NVMe for newer ones. SATA has a three finger layout while NVMe has one large connector and one small one. As for size, the most common and the one that's used on laptop is called 2280. Just remove the included screw, slide the drive into the slot and secure it down again. I mean, that's the way that it should be, but not all laptops do come with a screw uh, with their secondary M.2 slots. So if you don't have one, I'll make sure to leave a link down below where you can actually find them. Now, the next step is to actually head over to Windows again and format or initialize that drive that you wanted to start off fresh. To do that, go into the search bar, type partition, open the disk management utility, and it should find the new drive. Here, you would initialize it as GPT. Uh, it'll also show up in black, then right click on the drive information, make a new simple volume, give it a name and choose a drive letter before formatting. It'll do its thing and in no time, your upgrade will be ready to use. But what kind of performance do you get when you upgrade from a standard spinning hard drive to an SSD or perhaps even an NVMe SSD? I wanna start things off with game updates because there is a reason for that. The last thing that anyone wants is to just sit in front of their screen and then just wait for a download to finish just because their storage is becoming a bottleneck. This is super true when it comes to games like PUBG, which downloads larger files and then waits for them to decompress and install before downloading the next batch. This leads to massive time savings by moving to a faster drive. Warhammer 2 is a perfect example of another game that requires the storage system to compress and decompress really large files. But I also want to mention this seems to be something a lot of Steam games do. Rainbow Six, on the other hand, tends to download and install in a more parallel, streamlined way, and you'll see some benefits moving to a faster drive, just not as much. So now that patches are done or a game is installed, let's take a look at how notoriously slow loading games behave. And yes, the SATA SSD does load faster, but you won't see the same massive speed ups as when a game's installing or updating. The difference will be a lot less noticeable, then again, 30 seconds here and there does add up over time. So that pretty much wraps up our guide when it comes to optimizing and upgrading uh, your gaming laptop. Obviously the performance results, they do speak for themselves. And um, I know shopping season is right around the corner. And if you are looking for a really awesome gaming laptop without spending a lot of money, uh, consider the Legion 5 with the AMD Ryzen processor because it's just an amazing value and the performance that you get is actually pretty respectable too. So. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let us know what you guys think about uh, this video. In fact, if you have any suggestions or tips or tricks that we could use for a future update video, I'll be more than happy to take a look at them. So I think it's time for me to sign off. Hope you guys stay safe, spend responsibly, and uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.